Hey everybody, how is it going? Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to the show. Fall is kicking in in Atlanta, so you see I got my fro going on today. Um, hey everybody, it's episode 10 of the Music Money Makeover Show, so welcome back. Glad to see everybody coming in the building right now. All right, so tonight's topic is publishing administration, all right? So I'm gonna let everybody pour into the room right now and we'll get this thing going, okay? Um, hey, look, this week in Atlanta, it is the A3C conference and that's what's going on right now in Atlanta. I would love to see everybody that is on the stream or that frequents the show a lot. Um, I'd love to see you all um, come to, uh, I'd love to see you all come out into the A3C so I can, um, See you all. So right now I'm just adding this to a couple groups, so bear with me really quickly. Um, and then we'll we'll hop right on in. Alright, so couple more groups, couple more groups. We'll let everybody join on into the chat. And then um and then we'll hop into it. Okay. So let's see, let's see. I got a couple more people. Where's the music producer? And then I'll try and share. I'll try and get this to my artist launch family as well. All right. So anyway, um, and done. We're done. All right. Cool. All right. So we're in here. Like I said, it's episode ten of the Music Money Makeover Show. Everybody, welcome back. Tonight's topic is publishing administration. Everybody, come on in the room so we can get the show going. All right. Couple announcements really quickly. Um. I will be speaking at the DeKalb County Film Expo or Film and Entertainment Expo in Atlanta on October 19th. So you all can come out to that. I think tickets are like like 40 bucks or something like that, but there's gonna be a lot of things there, a lot of panels there, so it'll be great. This is not necessarily for music itself, but it's for film and television production and music is, you know, underneath that, so that'll be there as well, all right? So that's... That's the, that's next week uh, in Atlanta. And then also this week is the A3C in Atlanta. So like I said, I want to see you all in the building there. Don't forget, you can listen to this show uh, right after, a couple a couple hours after um, it's over on Spotify. All of my episodes are on my Spotify podcast, The Music Money Makeover Show. You can catch it there. All right. And then also don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Casey Graham underscore 24 and at District 24 Music, that's for the library. And then also you can follow me on Facebook, which you're watching me now, it's on Casey Graham, that's my page. And then you can also catch me on LinkedIn at Casey Graham as well, all right? So let's jump into it. <clears throat> so there's, there's publishing agreements are, I'm gonna say they mainly contain the same things a lot, right? It, they don't. They don't really change too much, but they fluctuate on things like this, okay? And this this is what I'm gonna cover tonight and we're gonna flop between two things. Even though I'm covering publishing administration, we're gonna flop between co-publishing and then we're also gonna flop between publishing administration. So let's, what is publishing administration? Let's just clarify it really quick. So, you know, administration is an agreement between two parties. So let's say if it's you and it's me and we're going to agree that, hey, I'll be the administrator and you'll be the copyright owner and you're going to allow me to administer the rights based on your copyright, okay? So I'll be the sole person that will come in and and I'll take care of, you know, registering with the copyright office, make sure it's registered everywhere so the money can flow in properly. And then I may do a little bit of exploitation in there. Depends on if you give me enough rights to do that, but I'm your guy, all right? I'll handle all that stuff for you, okay? So let's talk about the difference between a co-publishing deal and an administration deal before we go forward. And this is a simple factor that lies in here, okay? So for a co-publishing deal, the co-publishing or the co-publisher will own a piece of the copyright for the life of the copyright, okay? So this is what it means when you get into a co-publishing deal, they're gonna take ownership in your copyright and help you exploit it for the life of the copyright, for as long as the government says that the copyright will last, okay? Then on the other side, when it comes to administration, 
they don't own a piece of the copyright. They just administer your rights in that particular composition or song, whatever, however you want to call it, for you. And the contract only lasts as long as you negotiate it. The typical term is about five years, but that's how long it lasts. Now, there's a little guy that's hanging on, and this is just a collection contract or a collection agreement where they charge you a minuscule fee and you just have them collect on your behalf. And that's it. Like, don't do anything else, but just collect the money for me. That's it, okay? But let's jump in. All right, let's jump in. Let's get... And if you all have any questions, just go ahead and drop them in the comment section. Instagram, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comment section. I'll answer as we go along, okay? So, administration rights. They are... It's, it's a term to define, you know, who amongst the copyright owners um, of the publisher has the authority to grant licenses for the use of the music. This is important, okay? Because let's say... Let's say you work with, um, and I'm gonna cover this later in the show as well. Let's say you work with an artist that has a record label and it's indie or it could be major indie. They may actually have a designated administrator to handle the publishing administration for everybody, okay? This can be a good thing and it could be a bad thing, all right? Because if you have an administrator who is no, I'm not going to say not proven, but what I'm going to say is they don't necessarily have a good track record because sometimes no track record is OK. Right. Sometimes it's OK because they're new. They're getting started. But when they have a track record of not paying people on time and, you know, holding funds, then you might have a problem there. But what will happen is that all of the publishing rights will get allocate it to this one administrator and then they will issue it out for everybody all right this is the designated person okay now i'll get into how this can be a little bit expensive if you don't do it this way if you do it this way it had better be in a situation where the song will make a lot of money and there's a lot of traction on it if there is not then we'll go the standard route where everybody collects on their own behalf, okay? Okay, so now, when you have an artist or a group of songwriters who's decided to write a song, someone must be the designated administrator or they both must administer their own rights, their own rights. And this will usually happen one of the following three ways. You'll appoint, appoint just like I said before, an exclusive administrator, but then, you may decide to appoint an exclusive administrator, but subject them to, or their authority to certain restrictions. I got that coming later. The restrictions is the juicy part of the contract, okay? But then, here's the other thing that kicks in. You might allow each owner to administer their own portion of the copyright to an administrator, okay? Now, let's say Let's talk about this scenario because this is the scenario that's picked amongst most do-it-yourself artists. Everybody has their own piece of the publishing and you're free to do with it what you want to do with it. Now, this is all fun and, and it's cool when you're making, you know, a couple thousand dollars and everybody's splitting it up and everything's fine and well. When you move on into the area of you know, we're doing, you know, $5,000 a month on the music plus, then licenses will start to come in. And let's say you do it with four writers, okay? These four writers now have to negotiate licenses that come in on their behalf for the whole of everybody. It then now gets expensive because, oh, this person has something to say about this, and this other writer has something to say about this, and then now we're not in agreement on the terms of what this contract will be. So if they rebuttal what the initial license is and they send their responses back to the initial licensor, then those contracts have to be in agreement with each other. So the licensor will get the contract back, but then it has to agree with all the all the other three. We're doing four. So it has to they have to agree with the other three, and the other attorneys will have to get those contracts. 
So now you can see how, how when you're in a situation and the money is starting to stack up and then you end up spending more money on legal fees as the money stacks up and licenses come in for this popular song. So you wanna be careful there. I think that if you plan on making a lot of money on the song, then at least put something in your agreement that, hey, if we cross this threshold, let's agree to have a mediator or an administrator for this song, okay? Now, um, let's, let's go back into that first selection. So how does this just an exclusive administrator work? Like it works like this. The administrator will take care of anyone that desires a license to use the music covered by the admin agreement. They need only to locate and negotiate with and obtain a license from a single person. The admin and the exclusive administrator. That's it. Simple, done, but everybody has to trust this administrator. Now, if this is your route, the administrator must handle all royalty payouts to every owner involved in a particular copyright in question. This is what happens when you sign a major deal like I explained earlier, and I'm just, I'm telling you what I told you before so you get it. This is what happens when you sign a major label deal or do a deal with a major label and the artist has interest in the composition, deeming it a controlled composition. So, like I said, if this artist may have something with a Warner, Sony, Columbia, whatever, you name it, the major company or the publisher will take over the administration rights for everybody because they know that they're going to do some hardcore exploitation, okay? And they don't want to deal with, you know, Bobby Joe over here trying to negotiate a license that they know how to do professionally, okay? So you may get swallowed up in, in that all oh, my do-it-yourself artist if you're, if you're trying to go bigger or you just so happens to come across working with a major label artist this or, this or a major indie artist, this is probably what's gonna happen to your publisher. Now let's talk about the restrictions a little bit. Now, with the restrictions, it's still gonna be the same way if you have one designated administrator. But with these restrictions, we'll come to things like, you know, making changes to the music and the lyrics. And I'm not gonna get on this big one. I'm gonna save this big restriction for later. But or things like using, let's say, the song in unauthorized content that you all don't like. Let's say if it's a, uh, you know, X-rated material. That these are restrictions that you give the administrator to say, hey, you can't exploit in this category, okay? But then now we go back to choice number three before I jump into these fees and how much this deal will actually cost you. We go back to choice number three and that's what everybody does. We all keep, we all take care of everything on our own, okay? It's, it's what we like to do in today's day and age, but picture this as every songwriter having their own manager. If you remember the TLC movie, and I think they wanted to renegotiate their contracts, but T-Boz had a manager, and Left Eye had a manager, and and uh, and Chili had a manager, and they all had lawyers for the managers and the artists, and everybody has to come together. And this is what you're doing. This is when you start to grow, and you and you get bigger. Everybody has to come in with their managers and lawyers and all this just to negotiate licenses. It gets convoluted and hectic. It's fun when you're on the lower level, but when you get bigger and the licenses get bigger and the payments get bigger, you have to deal with all of this. So think about that when you're doing, when you're releasing songs as a crew of folks, okay? Now, check this out. When the time comes and a license is issued, then everyone has to put in their two cents, like I was saying, on what they think will be fair. If obtaining a license from everyone involved, then the licensee may choose to back out this is what happens in sync licensing, okay? So some of you all may know, some of, some of you all that I follow may know a lot about one stops in sync licenses, right? And so if they have to deal with four people, mm, the license is pretty much gonna be set. They may take one rebuttal on the negotiation, but they're not gonna move too much further from where the price is set on the license, okay? So sync license is one thing, but there's a lot of other licenses that may come at you, 
okay? And if there is too much negotiation, they may say, hey man, look, we really only wanted to deal with one party. We're gonna back out of the deal, okay? So keep in mind when you deal with a lot of people in, in publishing situations, if there's too many, designate an administrator, okay? This is prime time for when you wanna go find one, all right? Now, make sure you have some smart-minded people on your team. I know creatives, a lot of times we get stuck in the creative aspect of, of things, but somebody has to be the voice of reason. If you don't, an administrator may be best. Trying to keep all the money in your pocket may lead you to not having any money at all, okay? So don't get too greedy. Pigs get fat, hogs get, hogs get slaughtered. All right, so now let's talk about how much this deal will cost you. Let's talk about an administration fee on a publishing deal. All right, I'm gonna read this out. The fee is charged by the person responsible for administering the music publishing of the compositions, okay? The admin fee is calculated by taking a percentage of the gross, not the net, but the gross publishing income, including both the writer's share and the publisher's share, okay? That's what they take. It doesn't, if it comes from one person, then they're gonna take from the writer's share and publisher's share of that one person who had interest in the copyright, okay? This is why it doesn't pay to give somebody 5% of this or 2% of that, you know what I'm saying? Like it's just a, a bit much there, okay? And then they run and they go get an administrator for their 2%. And just, just keep your circle tight, all right? And um, I'm going to get to this question that just came in, all right? Tasha, I'm going to answer your question in a minute, all right? The admin is also entitled to deduct his or her direct expenses involved in administering the publication of the compositions, all right? So to clear the air... The, if you give the rights and it's going to be listed in an admin admin con, contract that they will help exploit the composition because they want money to come in as well. Like I said, it's like an administration deal is just like a co-publishing deal, except for the publisher does not get ownership in the copyright. They just get a piece of the revenue. That's all it is. All right. So anyway, we got a question coming in here. Let's see. So there are some licensing situations that already have a set price and then some that you come up with the price. No, what I, what I meant by the set price is the license that comes in. Let's say that you have a license. I think last week we talked about licensing for music products like uh, toys and stuff. Let's say, Tasha, you do, you have a license that comes in for, I don't know, mahogany greeting cards and it opens up and it plays your song. It's like happy birthday and you got it going. It's like an audio card, okay? That will be a set price, okay? It's not gonna be what you come up with. It's what the licensee sends to you, Tasha, for the deal, okay? That's, that's what I meant by the set price, all right? Um, and thank you, Boris. Yes, I'm, I'm making sure you all get great information on this. I want to be clear. Those are the set prices there, all right? So, um, so some of these fees, let me go back to the fees because we were talking about that. So the admin is also entitled to deduct his or her direct expenses involved in administering the publication of the compositions. Now, I haven't gotten to their percentage yet, but I'm just talking about fees. Excuse my finger. I'm just talking about fees. So the administrator may have things like file storage fees. If they have to keep your stuff online for other people to get to, they may have things like printing fees. All right. They'll have legal fees. They'll have um, the accounting fees because they have to split up everybody's information and get out checks to everybody. And just overall overhead. Now, this is only in relation to the song. Okay. So you may have debt accruing when you sign your deal, but trust and believe at an administrator, it's not gonna be that much. It may be the debt for that one particular song will be adding up and it'll probably be something like a dollar a month, if that, you know, until it gets to, let's say, you may get a bump when it comes to royalty accounting. They may bump it up to five bucks. 
you know, when the royalties come out. But all these fees get deducted. But it's for publishing, those fees aren't high. Okay, so I just want to keep it clear. So, so that someone doesn't come in and they take your money from publishing administration. The, the fees to maintain a catalog of material may be high all in for the publisher. But for the artist, when it split, splits up, it's like anywhere from a couple quarters, pennies, nickels to a dollar, you know, maybe $10 max, you know, for the song for the whole year. All right, just to maintain it, keep maintenance on it. And, and the only thing that they may run into when it comes to legal fees is if a license comes in and the attorney has to review it, then the legal fees get subtracted from that license deal. OK, um, so the percentage and we're going to call this incentives. Now, this new section right here is what you give the publisher of what you will allow them percentage wise so they will feel entitled to work your record okay let's clarify again and you can catch my notes uh online after the show on my medium page they'll show up on facebook as well uh so i'll share them there and they also show up on linkedin as well so you can catch all the stuff that i wrote and i type out for the show you can read my articles there all right it'll be on my medium page Okay, incentives, all right? Let's clarify again. The administrator is pulling money from the income stream that goes, uh, uh, that goes and, and, ah, I type, ooh. Sometimes you get typos, but it happens. Uh, the administrator is pulling money from the income stream gross, and uh, then they pull from the writer's share and the publisher's share, plus tacking on any additional fees. This actually gives them incentive to promote the record already, all right? But my opinion, is an administration deal may prove to be well suited for a middleweight artist that wants to keep the ownership in their copyright but give the publisher enough incentive to promote and exploit the record okay now you're not going to get an admin deal from a major label if you're a middleweight and you're coming in saying hey i want an admin deal look blah 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 because they're looking for a certain threshold of cash flow coming in to make an admin deal make sense they want more than just an admin deal. Now, let's say if you're, I don't know, let's say if you're, um, uh, uh, I don't know, Michael Buble, right? Like if you're him or you're Rod Stewart or something and you're, some of your publishing deals are up, but you want to keep all your rights and you want to have them just administer on your behalf, you can. They will because they know that the cash is going to be great. But if you're middleweight, you're going to want to go to an independent publisher. Okay. So the way I see it is I'm going to give the admin 20%. And if only they will actively exploit and 10% if they just want to collect. All right. I'm not giving you 20% if you're not going to exploit my works. Okay. You got to exploit my works if I'm going to give you 20% because if not, we can do 10%. I might even do 12%, 15 max if you're, if you just don't want to exploit. Okay. But if I'm giving you 20% plus the fees that it costs to, to, you know, have my stuff housed and, and, and legal fees and all that stuff, you got to exploit my work. All right. Just keeping it frank out there for you all. All right. Why? Why? Because admin terms are much shorter than a co-publishing deal that lasts the life of the copyright. I like that. I like the admin deal. Because in five years, you know, they may put in a clause to say, hey, we still can collect, you know, trickling cash flow for the next 18 months. But after that, it's over. You still have your copyright, the admin goes away, and everybody walks away with a clean hand. Now, you might as well say that the admin deal is a licensing deal on your copyright's revenue stream, right? Licensing deal works like, hey, look, let me borrow your publishing for a minute and make some money off of it, and when I'm done, I'll give it back. The same way that licensing works, okay? Uh, if you get your stuff in a movie, hey, let me borrow your song. I'm going to pay you a, some money. We're going to make money, but you'll make some money as well. And then, you know, I won't be done with it when it comes to TV. But when, you know, the territories have been, been fully distributed, we're done. Uh, in house music, 
house music people on here. I know that house music, that all they do is like licensing deals. And it's, it's I'm something I'm still trying to understand because it's kind of confusing. But when house music uh, labels do licensing deals, that's essentially what they're doing. They're borrowing your master for, you know, three years, putting it in their catalog and say, hey, we're going to split this 50-50. I'll make some money off of it. When I'm done, you can have it back. All right? Do I like that? No, house music is, is, man, it's confusing to me. But essentially, that's what's happening. Let me borrow your publishing for a minute. You'll make more money, and it's less confusion. You can go create. I'll make some money, and when I'm done, you'll get it back. Admin deals are great. They're really great deals, okay? Now, we're still on incentives, so let's give them, let's give, let's give them incentives to do more for you, like meeting a minimum net publishing income. All right, so let's say, hey, look, man, I need you to meet a set amount of cash for me. And if you don't meet that, then maybe I'll just cancel or terminate this contract. How about that? How about that? Because now this gives them more incentive to work even harder on your behalf, especially if the song is amazing. Okay, so think about these things. Let's give them another incentive, all right? Um... Maybe ask for a small advance. Say, hey man, look, I know this isn't exactly co-publishing, but why don't you put a little wager on this? Let's let's say let's do 500 bucks or something or a thousand bucks on the admin deal to give you a little incentive to feel like you can make your money back. And uh, you know, it's a little it's a little uh, binder fee for me, you know? You take it 20%, why don't we let's do a thousand bucks on the song and you can administer it and you know, make your money back. How about that? Or you could do this. Hey, look, man, I know we're negotiating this uh, this contract. Why don't you pay my lawyer fees? That'll give you a little bit more incentive to make your money back. And then, um, you know, we'll call that a binder. Why not? Let's let's do that. Um. So, hey, Tasha, let me know what you're... I don't know what please means. I can't see these things. My phone is on widescreen. But let me know what please is... Um, Because I I think it is in relation to the house music licensing deals I'm talking about. Um, So, you know what? I'll jump into that and and we'll go on a tangent. Let me finish. Admin deals are very simple. I mean, literally, this is the last part of an admin deal. The restrictions. And I went through two of them at the beginning. All right? And then what I'll do is I'll go back, I'll hit the points again so you understand what an admin deal is and what you're getting into, all right? The the tricky thing, the tricky thing on these deals are the terms. So I'll address all of them, but let me hit these restrictions one more time. So now, the restrictions that you give the publishing admin is this. You're going to either allow them or restrict them from uh, making changes to the music or lyrics, okay? You're going to allow them or restrict them, and this is a big one, uh, from making mechanical reproductions um, on songs for less than the statutory rate. Big thing. Now, Now, as a publisher, a smart publisher does not do this. But if someone wants to take your song, re-record it, and redo it, And they'll say, hey, we'll give you the song and we'll reduce your mechanical rate. Then you want to kind of side eye your publisher like, why are you doing that? Because this is money that the government allots to the songwriters by law that is mandatory from the record label. That I don't know why anybody would reduce the rate, you know, as a publisher, but the only way they would do that is if it was in a discount record club, which we don't really have those anymore. So nothing mechanically is really discounted. So, you know, um, maybe in television and film, even though that's not a mechanical rate, when they license something and put it on Blu-ray and DVD, it's called a videogram license, but it kind of serves as that. I'm not gonna. That may they might that might be something they may reduce a royalty, but that's to be negotiated. But if your publisher decides to reduce your mechanical rate, you kind of gotta side eye your publisher and say, oh, "Man, I don't know. I don't 
don't know what's going on here, but okay, let's talk about that. So you can either restrict them or allow it. I would restrict them for doing anything less than the government allow, allotted statutory rate on the mechanical royalty, all right? Here's the third thing. You can either allow them or restrict them uh, to use the title of the song as a title of a TV, film, play, program, all right? So for instance, um, I don't know how many Power fans are in the building, but a couple, I think two episodes ago on Power, the 150 Cent directed, the title of the show was called Forgot About Dre. They have to get clearance from the publisher to use that title, okay? The song Forgot About Dre came out in 2001 on The Chronic 2001, but he uses it as the show title on Power. They have to get clearance from the publisher for that. So you can either allow your publisher to do that or restrict them from doing that. It's on you. Here's one thing that I would probably restrict publishers from doing. It's the next one. You can either allow them or restrict them from using the song in a political and or commercial advertisement. I'd probably do the political advertisement, but not the commercial. No, no, we want commercial money. We want commercial sinks and all of that. So let's get all that commercial money, okay? But the political campaign, you might not support a Republican, a Republican, a liberal, a, you know, or independent or Democrat, and you don't want your song being used in a political commercial. So watch that, all right? Also, you may allow them or restrict them from using your stuff in pornographic material, rated X material, inappropriate, inappropriate material. Now, I mean, depending on, you know, who you are, like if you feel you're going to get a lot of license from popular, you know, adult sites, then so be it. Do it. I mean, it's a huge industry out there. But if you don't want your stuff floating around in adult entertainment, then restrict the publisher from doing that. Because let me tell you, adult entertainment, they want, man, if they can get A-list songs in, they want it in. Okay? So watch that. Also, the last thing, and these are standard restrictions because it doesn't really go too much further than this. You can either allow them or restrict the publisher from the production of a dramatic adaptation of the song. An example of this is Tales. All right, the Irv Gotti show on BET. When they reenact lyrics from a song in a dramatic theatrical release or television release, they have to get permission from the publisher to do that. Okay, so you can either allow the publisher to make this license or restrict them, the publisher from, from giving this license. It's all on you. All right, so. Let's go back through this. And Tasha, I hope you're still on the line. I hope you didn't get off, but I'll cover your license questions or I'll go on a tangent on that. Um, so let's cover this again. We have in an administration agreement because all publishing agreements essentially administer. All right, we have co-publishing agreements. We have administration agreements. And then we have a collection agreement. All right, the co-publisher owns piece of your copyright for the life of your copyright. The administrator does not own any copyright, but it's only for a term. All right. So the term on the co-publisher was for the life, a lifetime term. You got life with the co-publisher. With the administrator, it's just a small term of max of about five years and then you can renegotiate. And then with the collection person, it's only a small term of about five years, but it's a, the percentage of it is way smaller than the administrator, okay? So now that we have our three administration situations, we're gonna all, we're gonna say that the deals can happen in these three ways. You can appoint an exclusive administrator for everybody involved. You can appoint an exclusive administrator, administrator with um, and subject his or her authority to certain restrictions, which why wouldn't you do that anyway? Or you can um, get an administrator um, or allow each owner of the copyright to get their own administrator, which can prove to be expensive as revenues go up. All right. Now, fees, don't forget a collectioner or a collection administrator will only take about 10%. An administrator will take 20% max and a co-publisher will start at 25%. 
all right? And if they get really gangster, they'll take 50%, all right? Don't forget, the fees on top of their fee or their percentage are like things like file storage fees, attorney fees, printing fees, royalty accounting fees, all this stuff adds up. And then also the incentive. Now, if you do a co-publishing deal, your incentive is the advance. If you do an administration deal, your incentive is the percentage, all right? And then extra incentive will be to ask them to say, hey, either pay my lawyer fees, ask for a small advance, or you can just work something in there how you want to, just kind of, you know, somewhat get fancy with your, your incentive that you'll give them. And then remember, your restrictions will be uh, either restricting or allowing another to make changes to the music or lyrics, restricting restricting or allowing mechanical reproductions uh, of songs for less than a statutory rate. No, no, don't do that unless it's going to be a really good deal. Or, uh, or restrict or allow the use of the title of the song as a television film or a theatrical play program. You can restrict or allow the use of the song in political or commercial advertisements. Don't do the commercial advertisements unless they're trying to take your song away for life and own it. Uh, you can restrict or allow the songs in adult con- uh, adult pornographic content or just inappropriate content. Restrict that if you don't want your stuff showing up there. All right. Or you can restrict or allow the production of a dramatic adaptation of the song. All right. Cool. Let me ask you some questions really quick. Um, and then Michelle, let's see. Michelle Spellman says, I have song, a song. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming she says a song. I have a song uh, where the producers did not buy the license for streaming and digital download. Is there a website where I can buy the rights so I can stream on platforms? So Michelle, I hope you're still on the line because I'm answering your question now. Um, I would say it sounds like you got a beat lease somewhere. So I'd say go back and negotiate with that producer. Okay. Um, when you do beat leasing and stuff like that, it gets really it gets crazy because you don't know how many people leased the beat before you or after you. And then if it's still available for lease, that means nobody nobody bought the rights to have it exclusively. And when you're gonna do that and someone has beats on their site for 300 bucks, you kind of want to buy it exclusively. I mean, I, I mean, $300 like for an exclusive beat. Okay, no, you have eight songs. Okay, so, and you lease, did you lease all eight songs or did you purchase the eight songs? So I'll, wait, I'll wait on you to, did you lease or, or purchase exclusive rights to the eight songs? Because that, that for me, like if you're going to really and truly promote and sell your stuff from these producers, you're going to want all the rights involved. Now, if you're just going to do it and throw it up, you spent 30 bucks, fine, whatever, like, but it's only going to be on SoundCloud or something like that They're, or Audio Mac. They're not going to allow you to put it on Apple Music or Spotify. So did you lease or, or exclusively purchase those songs? So I'm trying to figure out. So let me know in the comment section. All right. So what I want to do is um, jump really quickly back into Tasha's. Um, I want to jump into Tasha's question. She, I think that we were talking about just licensing and house music. This is very confusing as I'm learning about it. But like I said, so let's break it down to its simplest form. Licenses for house music labels go from the creators. And by the way, I heard the song. Um, I, dang it. You, you put it in artist launch a while ago or earlier today. I heard the song, but I also saw you performing that song somewhere online as well. I love that. So, but anyway, you're going to license this song. See, I was trying to see if I can find the name of it so I can use it and promote you at the same time. Uh, so, and we're going to treat this song as if it wasn't a sample or any, or an interpolation. All right. So Miss Tasha Larea is on the line and she has a song called Wish I Didn't Miss You. 
All right? And this song will be licensed to a record label in the house music world. Okay? It's it works the same way as if you were put putting stuff in my library. By the way, if you all want stuff considered for television and film, you can go to district24music.com slash submit music and I will check it out and we can get your stuff into the music library. It works that same way. You take the song, but because this is a record company, you're going to take the master recording and put that over into the record company and they're going to hold it for maybe a term of three to five years Three mainly for a record label that's healthy because after that it's going to start to fade out. So, three years you're going to hold it there at three years, and then after the three years, what you're going to what they're going to end up doing is giving it back to you or renegotiating the term and say, Hey, hey, we don't want to let it go just yet. They're going to take 50% from it, and then they're going to give you the other 50%. All right. Where this gets confusing to me is that you end up having the record label hold it. And when it's done for the three years that you, if you all don't renegotiate and it goes back, they're actually still having it in their catalog and making money on it. And then it gets confusing. Then at the same time, there's things like, I know in the house music world, they don't really put stuff on, you know, Spotify and uh, Apple Music. Most of the stuff goes to TrackSource and all of this. And so that's an offshoot site. I don't know if they pay mechanical royalties here in the US. Maybe that's a question that I have to dig up on TrackSource. But I know that they probably more than likely don't pay mechanical royalties, okay? And then on top of that, it gets confusing when you go overseas. So I like to see what a deal, Tasha, I would love to see what one of those licensing deals actually looks like. Cause I can't wrap my head around the master. I, I really can't. I can wrap my head around publishing, but after I just explained that to you, I don't really understand licensing on the master recording for another party to make money. Okay, okay, they send music to track source first and then send to all other places later. Okay, so when they send that music to okay, because I know that track source takes something like 45% unless you have a deal with them and then maybe something like 25. Track source takes a lot of money, you know. So, and then once it's over with, yeah, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll get into it later. You can give me a call, we can do that. All right. Um, but yeah, I know that it, it's, 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 it just gets a little confusing. Now, Michelle, I haven't forgot about you. I'm going to jump back um, on. So you're saying that we are talking about artists like Adele and I purchase rights to use the songs. Now, I'm, I'm a little confused as to what you mean, Michelle. What, what? I thought we were, let me go back to your original question. The original question was, I have... I have a song where the producers did not buy the license for streaming and digital downloads. Is there a website where I can buy the rights so I can stream on platforms? No, you there. No, there is no website. You have to go back and negotiate with the producers. And then I asked, did you purchase the exclusive license or the lease to the songs? Because I'm thinking that you lease beats. And then you said we are we are talking about artists like Adele and I purchase rights to use the songs. I'm not sure what you mean by you purchase rights to use the songs. Because it sounds like to me you you did you license the song for a uh, use in like a uh, I don't know on, on a movie or something? Are you are you like a another content creator? Or I don't I'm not getting your perspective. What what type of license was it that you had? You have to be clear with me on that one. And anybody else, you all can drop questions in the comment section. Section I'm taking general questions. Like I said, this is the publishing admin thing. Um, I'm going to plug myself while I'm waiting on these questions to come in. Oh, not the license, but what I'm not. 
I'm not sure why you're asking me about streaming. I'm trying to get to the bottom of this. That's what I'm really trying to get to the bottom of. But anyway, if you all want to uh, send music for consideration for television and film, you can submit to my library. For those of you all who haven't talked to me a while, in a while, I finally opened it. Yes, you can go to district24music.com slash submit music, drop some music in there, um, fill out the whole entire form. It's very thorough. I need all that information to consider your stuff for television and film. All right. So it's for my artist to promote on a college tour. Huh. I'm so so it wasn't a beat lease. It was they just said the producer said you couldn't stream it. Is that right? Is that what you're saying, Michelle? Because I now have streaming feel and to I'm not quite you got a typo going on there. Anyway, um yeah, everybody, look, these these publishing admin deals out here are, are a great opportunity when you're when you're trying to tighten up your business. I recommend getting one when you got some cash flow rolling in. All right. So if anybody has any publishing questions, go ahead and drop them. All right. And then I usually at this time, I usually do my news segment, but uh oh, lost my comments. Right, so it was a beat lease. Okay, that should have been in the contract, but because it was a beat lease, you kind of you're subject to them. I mean, now you know you can infringe on the contract if you want to, uh, but I'd say go and negotiate with the producer. Go back and talk to the producer and see if you can get extra rights. They may give it to you. They may say purchase an exclusive license. But if you're if you're doing college tours and you're really out here doing it, you're either gonna one just infringe. I'm because it happens. You're just gonna infringe on the on the agreement and go ahead and do it and ask for forgiveness later and say I didn't know how to read a contract. But if you're asking me, it seems like you know how to read enough of one to know that it, you're gonna be infringing. So if you're gonna do that. Just know your consequences of it. But chances are these producers don't even really care because they're selling so many beats or they're just happy to make 30 bucks. That's why I don't really like beat leasing stuff as a producer, but it can be okay. All right. So if you're on college campuses and tours, go by all means, you can go ahead and perform it. But if they're telling you can't stream it like on Spotify and Apple Music, well, then that's just what the contract says. And you got to abide by that. If you don't, well, then, you know, then just pay for it later or they might not even know. The thing where with beat leasing is how it gets confusing is if you decide to put that stuff out and then it goes to Shazam, there's probably other people that already have that beat in Shazam. So your stuff may be coming up as something else. This is how beat leasing gets very confusing when it comes down to the artist. Okay, so you want to be mindful of that. All right, does any questions on publishing Go ahead and drop them in the comment section. Hey, no problem, Christopher Allen. You uh, you got it, man, anytime. This is what I do every Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. I was supposed to be at a show tonight, but I decided not to do it and just keep it thorough with you all like I do every week, all right? And, um, and give you all this uh, music bu uh, business information, all right? Shout out to everybody in the room that's from Atlanta right now. Um, because I'm down here or out here, wherever you all are from. And if you make it to Atlanta at some point during a point where uh, it's like a, a networking conference, like this week at A3C, I'd like to meet up with anybody who's going to be at A3C. Let's talk about some music, man. Let's talk about some music. Anyway, oh, also a cool thing that's going on in L.A. in November is Capitol Records is having somewhat of a small conference. Uh, at the Capitol Records building, I think I saw Dave Bogan of um, of Tune Registry mention that. That is a conference that I'm trying to scroll and find. It. That's a conference that's going on at. Uh, let me see if I can. At, at, on November 17th, I think it'd be cool if you're in LA to. Uh, I think it would be cool if you're in LA to go out there to the Capitol Records building and network, man. 
um, it'd be a great opportunity. All right. So if that is all the questions for tonight, you got any questions? I'll and let's see. I need to catch them. Oh yeah, like you can, but even Tasha, you can catch all of these shows if you don't have time to watch the videos, which most people don't. Hop on my Spotify page. It's the Music Money Makeover Show, and that's everybody. You all can hop on my Spotify page and check it out. The Music Money Makeover Show on Spotify. I have all of these episodes on there. This one will be available tonight after the show. Give me about an hour or so, or an hour and a half, and um, and I'll put it up, and you can listen back to it. So I have all the information there. Uh, man, like I'm giving this information to folks, and I want them to be you know, educated in the music business. Like you're going to have to listen to these shows, do your research and dig a bit. Some of the stuff I talk about can be a little advanced, but if this is what you plan on doing with your career, you might as well do it. All right. I don't, you know, I try, I, I try to keep this as much as I can to the do it yourself artist stage so that you all actually get the information as it's supposed to be. All right. What is YouTube? I actually do not have this stuff on YouTube. I have it directly on Spotify, all right? Um, and then if you're on Facebook, which you're watching it now, you can get the whole, the whole all the videos are on my Facebook page. Every single video. Me talking all this knowledge and all this stuff about the music business, I'm just being totally open with you, all right? So you all can check all the stuff out on my Facebook page. Just click my video tab and you'll see all the videos. Also, on my LinkedIn page, on this Facebook page, and my Instagram page, I have recap videos almost every day of the stuff that was very pertinent in the show. I take recap videos and I put those up so you can have those during the week as a reminder that, oh, I forgot about that part in the show. I need to dig more into it, all right? My Instagram page is at CaseyGram underscore 24. And then the library Instagram page is at District 24 Music. Don't forget, if you want your music in television and film, you can drop me a, uh, a, a couple songs at district24music.com slash submit music. All right. Um, let's see. Exactly. I've been talking about this for a long time, but didn't know all the details to make it happen. And now I have no excuses. Yes. Everything is on Spotify. Go to Spotify. Also, the podcasts are on Google Podcasts. They're on Breaker. They're on, uh, uh, what else? Radio Public. Uh, trying to think. I've been, I haven't worked on the Apple Podcast for you all. I'll make it my mission to work on the Apple Podcast so you can have it there. Process with Apple is very tedious sometimes. It's just like, oh, it's so manual with everything. So that's why everything for me is on Spotify to make it easy. Um, but like I said, if you want to catch these shows, you can catch it on Facebook. It's there. All right. So anyway, look, the show is is getting getting close to the end. Let me see. I didn't find anything. Nothing really interesting happened that would suit you all. Um, there's a lot of major label things that happened. But nothing that would really suit the independent artists out there this week. Uh, two weeks ago, man, a lot of things happened. Um, especially dealing with lyrics. A lot of things happened. When Apple Music two weeks ago announced the lyric uh, display thing in Apple Music, man, that's like, that's like more money. That's a whole other check. And the way you get that check when Apple Music displays your lyrics or Google displays your lyrics, when you want to search the lyric of a song and you go online and you search it and you find it, Lyric Find is the company that licenses those, licenses those lyrics. And every time someone says like, oh, let me look at the lyrics, boop, and they hit the button and the lyrics get displayed, you get a, pay, a check for that. Now, I don't know how much it's going to be. It's probably like a penny or two, but you get something for that. All right. That's another royalty stream that's out there. Lyric find, lyricfind.com. Lyricfind.com. All right. You'll find that Google, anytime you Google some lyrics, it'll say licensed by Lyric Find. All right. So a little tidbit to throw out there. But um, nothing really interesting in the news for all of my do-it-yourselfers. Um, so, yeah. All right. What? Well, Apple is officially shutting down iTunes, but song downloads aren't completely dead. 
Oh wow, that actually hurts. That just came out today. I did not see that, I just checked another site. What does this mean for all my do-it-yourself musicians out there? All right, well, yeah, lyricfind.com. Um, hmm. That's kind of, that's, that's, that's kind of sad. Um, that's kind of sad that Apple Music, I mean, iTunes is closing for real, for real. I mean, I know they did it overseas, but for you all who strive, you know, for the, for the digital downloads, um, man, wow. Wow. That you're gonna have to really get your streaming game up. You're gonna have to direct people to these streams. I'm, yeah, man. I mean, like, I, woo, that's a blow. All right, what else happened then? Let's let's see if I can't get something good for you all that would make sense for all my do-it-yourselfers out there. Um, because it, you know, um, also look, branding. Let's talk about that for a hot second. I got a little bit of time. I'll chop it up about branding. Um. Oh man, like I'm looking at the wrong site. Apple is ex- is excited about their upcoming music TV combo. Major labels aren't. I gotta see what that is. I'm doing this stuff on the air live with you all. Usually I have all this stuff prepped, but I didn't see this before today. This one just I came don't out. Okay. Seems like they're tying in Apple Music with Apple TV, the subscription service. Okay, I can see. That means that the labels will lose money. Yeah, they should charge. Okay, so so right now if you have Apple Music like I do, it's you know, it's um it's you know $9.99. But they want to bundle this and call it because they're shutting down Apple Music. I mean I should because they're shutting down iTunes, they Record labels are saying they should at least charge thirteen dollars or fifteen dollars a month, you know, for so that we can continue to get the same amount of money. Um, I agree. I don't disagree with that. I gotta look more into this. I may come back next week and bring some more information um, to you. Uh, this, is, this opens up a chance for artists to create their own portals and sell their music on their own websites. Yeah, I mean, really, like. You know, a couple weeks ago on the show, um, my guy Eric up in Ohio mentioned that, you know, when he goes to the smaller markets, he does well with CDs in the small markets. And I said, I don't, I don't disagree with you because in the smaller markets, people will, you know, they treat you like stars. They don't get to see much. And if you have something that they can buy, they will buy some CDs, you know. But then here's the difference between the small market in the States, that is. The smaller markets will buy the CDs. The bigger markets will buy the vinyl. All right, so I'm in Atlanta. Atlanta will buy vinyl, especially if it's beautifully made and all this stuff, and you give a great show and performance, they'll buy some vinyl from you and T-shirts. But if like, let's say if you're in Ohio and let's say you're in Cleveland, Cleveland may not buy CDs, but if you go to, to, to Toledo, they'll buy CDs. If you go to Akron, they'll buy CDs. For my folks in the South, like, I'm in Atlanta, but if I go to Chattanooga, they may buy some CDs. The reason why is, you know, they're not up to date with all the technology that we have in the bigger cities. They're not moving like we are. You know, these people are still driving their 97 Honda with the CD player in it. You know what I'm saying? So that's what they want. They want CDs, but the bigger market wants a collectible. So they'll take some vinyl. You know, the bigger market might even take a tape, cassette tapes, you know, because those are you know, kind of on, on the, you know, the thing there. So your bigger markets, you know, it depends on, and I always tell people when it comes to merch, you want to make merch that is close to your personality. Don't make merch that doesn't have anything to do with you. You know what I'm saying? So like for currency, he's a rapper, but lighters and weed trays would make sense for him. Okay. Um, you know, Things like that, like let, like for Rick Ross, he he loves lemon pepper chicken wings. It'd be dope if he had a lemon pepper chicken wing pillow that had his name Rick Ross on it. That'd be dope. You know what I'm saying? Um, stuff like that. You have to look at what it is. You look at your interests, and then you make merch out of that. Not the music. The music, the merch you're gonna make is a T-shirt, some vinyls, some CDs, 
whatnot. But anything else like your, maybe you have political views that you feel strongly about. You put that on the t-shirt. Maybe you have, and you always talk about it. Let's say if you into things that are like, you know, like if you're into crystals, like, and you post it on your Instagram page, like, you know, different gemstones and crystals. Maybe you do some merch out of that. You know, maybe you have a jewelry line and that's your merch. Okay. So, oh man, my Instagram is cutting off, but Facebook, we still here kicking it. Um, Michelle says, is it that labels are selling pro, uh, is that what Michelle, you got a bunch of typos going on. I hope I'm saying your name right. Is that labels are selling products are their sites now. Um, I, I'm not sure what you're saying. Is it, I'm going to, I'm going to read this as, is it that labels are selling products on their sites now? Well, when you sign a deal with a major label, they're going to give you a 360 deal anyway. And, you know, unless you're, unless you got some clout, you're not going to work your way out of that 360 deal. So the label will send your merch to their merch company. All right. And then they'll build you a website that looks like your site, but they'll be selling the merch for you. And then you'll get a percentage of that. Um, so that's that's how that's how the label takes care of the product. So the CDs, the vinyl, all this special on-demand ordering stuff, they'll take care of all of that for you. Okay. And and for you, those of you all out there who don't know, the merch company should be separate from your uh from your record deal. You don't want to 360 your merch in because your merch is where you make your money. All right. You want to have something for you. All right, but a lot of you all who are getting signed to these deals so early on, but you don't have any clout, you're giving away everything. And now with iTunes out of the way in the US, my gosh, that's, everything is up to pennies now. So you all are gonna have to really get heavy on your playlisting. You're gonna have to really work this internet hard out here and and um and get your, your, your spins up that way, okay? So, um, you know, I'd say stay independent as long as you can. I know you, I know you hear it over and over and over again, but stay independent as long as you can, you know, because at the end of the day, if you're running an operation and you're doing six figures, that six figures that you're doing every year is the money and the headache is a lot more doable than if you were signed with a major label. Because let's say you do a show, but you make 10,000 at a show, but then you're signed to a major label and you're hot and you're making 100,000 a show. All of the expenses scale with it. They don't change, they just scale, okay? So I was talking to somebody about Cardi B making half a million dollars a show. And I'm like, well, she may have the house and the cars and the jewelry, but the show production is higher. All right, so if you make more money, the DJ is going to want more money, okay? Then you got to pay for security. You got to, you know, outside of the, the promoter paying for travel, sometimes you got to pay for your own travel, moving around, your own private jets now. You know, you got your house. The house has your way. The, pay, the place where you dwell has to be secure. You're constantly paying for legal fees all the time, you know? The expenses add up. More money, more problems, like Biggie said. So you gotta, you gotta keep these things in mind. A lot of times, getting to the bag isn't necessarily going and getting a deal. Sometimes it's just, hey, let's set our business up right so bags can come to us instead of us trying to go always secure a, a bag on an advance. How about that? You know what I'm saying? Like, how about let's let's get some some merch together and let's start flipping some merch. How about that? You know, so you got to really think about it before you before you hop in. But anyway, y'all, I'm over the, the time for the show. It's a long show. I've been rambling. I hope you all got what you needed out of the um, publishing administration uh, part of the show that I was talking about. That's what I wanted to bring today. I will holler at you all next week, Tuesday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm always here talking about music business, ins and outs of publishing and licensing and all that stuff. 
Don't forget, follow me on Instagram at CaseyGram underscore 24. Submit music to me for consideration into television and film and to enter into my music library so I can just put your stuff out there to get you more sync licenses. That's at district24music.com slash submit music. If you're in Atlanta this week for the A3C Music Conference, everybody, a lot of people are, drop me a DM, I'll link up with you, all right? Uh, also, if you're in Atlanta, I will be at the DeKalb Film Expo, DeKalb Film and Entertainment Expo, all right? Uh, we'll be there. As you know, the, uh, Tyler Perry just opened up his new studio here. It is amazing. And so film production is starting to flood into Atlanta. So I will be at the Film and Entertainment Expo for DeKalb County. All right. That's on October 19th. I will have a time uh, for you there uh, when I get my time. All right. So look out for that next week. Next week, I will just be back in the same place. Tuesday, 830 p.m. I'll holler at you then. All right, everybody. Peace.